Welcome to... On tonight's, yes, playoff edition of Clubhouse Live, Josiah DeGuara is back for another Victory Monday show. And joining us is one of the Packers' young, exciting receivers, the speedy Bo Melton is here. The Packers put together a big playoff performance in Big D. We'll talk about the big win and what's next with the guys. And tonight's Clubhouse Live Challenge is a true test of athleticism. Okay, maybe not, but it's going to be fun. It's time to get started. Hey, Josiah. Hey, Bo. Come on in. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Good Monday evening. Welcome back to the Fox Club. We're hanging out inside Neuroscience Group Field at Fox City Stadium, Grand Chute, Wisconsin. This is the home of the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. It is also home to Clubhouse Live. Boy, standing ovation, big crowd here tonight. How's everybody doing on this Victory Monday playoff edition show? Amazing what a few weeks, uh, how, how different uh, things uh, can turn, right, uh, for, the, for the better. So we got a lot to get to, but before we get started, we always have to give it up to our high fivers tonight. They are our high school team of the week. Check them out. They're state ranked. They're really good. They are the Appleton North boys basketball team. They're yes. right there. All right. That's right. Yes, 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 the Lightning are here, and uh, we will showcase them more prominently and more formally uh, a little bit later in the show. So let's talk about this. How do you guys like Green Bay Packers 48, Dallas Cowboys 32? Hey, you know, you know I got to say, right? How about them Packers, everybody, huh? Okay. Mean Gene is in a lather. My goodness. Uh, relax, Mean Gene. We got an hour to get through. Green Bay is moving on after throttling, dismantling, and stunning the Cowboys, right? Sunday in an NFC super wild card playoff uh, showdown at Jerry World. How about Jordan Love doing it again? 272 yards, three touchdowns, all the different receivers directed an offense that finished with 415 yards. Only a late incompletion kept him from, uh, from posting a perfect passer rating. Instead, 157.2 will just have to do, right? Uh, how about Aaron Jones, Showtime, doing it again? He reached 100 yards for the fourth straight game with 118 uh, on the ground, three more touchdowns. Romeo Dobbs had a big game. Third straight receiver to finish with at least 100 receiving yards as he wound up with 151 yards. His first career 100-yard game and uh, a touchdown on six catches. How about Darnell Savage coming to play yesterday? A huge 64-yard pick six with under two minutes to play in the half. That gave the Packers a 27-0 lead. Jerry Jones is all fidgety in his owner's box at that point, right? The victory not only snapped the Cowboys' 16-game home winning streak, but it allowed the Packers to move to a perfect 6-0 in games uh, they have played at AT&T Stadium. Up next, Green Bay is going to Santa Clara, California. They're ready to take on the 49ers. Are you ready for the big game? Another classic playoff matchup coming up on Saturday night. Hey, look who's back. Happy Vince. He loves winning football games, especially playoff games, and he loves his football players. They're back right over there. First, our, our co-host is here after a two-week uh, hiatus. Actually, I haven't seen this guy in about a month, right? Uh, we'll talk about kind of the weird stuff that was going on when he was last year. But Green Bay Packers tight end Josiah DeGora is sitting, uh, sitting right over there. And look who's hanging out with Josiah. It is the very speedy wide receiver. Number 80, Bo Melton is here as well. Hey, we want to thank our presenting sponsors for, uh, before we get going. Cellcom and Packerland Home Improvement. Keep your fitness goals without breaking your financial goals. Get a new uh, phone and smartwatch for less than $10 a month at Cellcom. Visit cellcom.com slash deals for details. And again, Packerland Home Improvement. They have delivered superior windows and doors installation service for 50 years. Take advantage of their current special. Buy one window or door, get one 60% 
50% off plus 12 months no payments. And for folks in the audience or watching online, you can get an additional $250 off your entire project simply by mentioning Clubhouse Live. Packerland Home Improvement, it matters, it's your home. The least uh, favorite part of, for all of us, right, of the show, uh, but I am contractually obligated to introduce this goofball. It is none other than yes. Chicago Bears fan, Ricardo Arguello, everybody. That's right. In the contract, baby. Do we In still the have contract. To talk about the Bears or not? Are we done with that? Uh, if you want to. Hey, we're all happy that Matt Eberflus is coming back, right? We're all <laughs> happy about that. Well, we got rid of that Luke Getze. Hey. What's it like? Why wouldn't we do that? What's it like as an opposing fan watching the Packers with yet another elite quarterback? It's terrible, to yes. be honest. Yes. But the great thing is, there's always next year, Brett. Well, there always is next year for you. There's team. always next year, my We're friend. living in the here and now, though, with the Packers in the playoffs. So, hey, uh, Ricardo, how does the show work? Because we want to get the guys over yeah. here pretty quick. We are interactive, so we invite your comments and questions. Brett, we already have a very active live chat going on and anybody from around the world could be checking in right could have china checking in russia you never know who's going to be those two countries have a lot of yeah, other maybe things we should, going yeah, on maybe right they now, don't have a lot of yeah. freedom for internet but uh, <laughs> no, they yeah don't if they have any comments or questions brett send them over to me i relay them to you and over to the guys x handles twitter handles whatever we want to say at pc bretzi at ricardo de Leon, at josiah uh, d5 not sure if bo has a twitter account but uh, we can ask him when he gets up here also facebook give us a like please facebook.com slash Clubhouse Live. Ricardo, you see what I did? Again, budgets are yeah. tight, to the, so I had to kind of well, reconfigure or come up with something for the 49ers welcome, Matt. We want the guys to stomp their feet, wipe off all that salt and grime from the, from the winter storm. Brett, it's workable, right? It's workable. There you go. It worked last week with the Cowboys. It's going to work again with the, with the 49ers, so maybe Josiah and Bo can stomp their feet all over that logo. Our co-host, he's in his fourth NFL season, all with the Packers. He blocks on touchdown runs. Did you see him lay out Micah Parsons yesterday? He catches passes. He's a veteran leader, and he is definitely glad I am back in this seat, right? He is definitely glad I'm here. How about a big Clubhouse Live welcome for Green Bay Packers tight end number 81. It is the outlaw. Josiah DeGuara is here. There we go. Good to have you back, Outlaw. Welcome back. Good to see you. We're back. Good to see you, too. Yes, yes. Well, first, uh, before we, we get going, I think, I think we all owe you guys uh, an, uh, an emphatic thank you, okay? First of all, it's always fun to watch playoff football, right, and, and, and winning football, right? But by you guys winning and advancing the playoffs, we're getting through the month of January, aren't we? The worst month of the year. So thank you for snow. that. A lot of snow. A lot of snow, a lot of cold, so you're keeping us busy. But uh, speaking of all that snow, how's, how's a kid from Northern California liking this frigid Wisconsin winter, right? Uh, that's, yeah. This is this, this fun. Yeah, I feel like most snow we've gotten since I've been here oh, yeah. in the last, last few years. So shout out to my neighbors uh, plowing my driveway for okay. me. They're the best. Craig and Ross, love you guys. Appreciate it. <laughs> because uh, that really helped me out because I don't have a shovel, snow plow. I'm really learning as we go here, so... It's been a good time the last few days. I was going to ask you about that because I asked Keyshawn and his guest, Jonathan Owens, last week. And when we told Keyshawn, right, Ricardo, that there was a big storm coming, he looked terrified. And he said he didn't have neighbors that could help him out. Now, I, think, I think he said all he had to do was put down some salt. Yeah. And, that, that, and, and no, it that just doesn't drive work. all over yeah. it, yeah, and pack it down. So it's good. To, I was going to ask you if you had some helpers, which, which is good. So they, they plowed you out and uh, able to get you to uh, focus on things that are more important, right, uh, football. So, by the way, I haven't seen you in a while, right? Uh, I know you had to kind of grind through two weeks ago. I was under the weather, and, and Ricardo. It was great. The backup it was quarterback. It was a good time. I'm glad you're feeling better, but, you know, he, he, he did his best. He, he did, did his best. He did yeah, a good yeah. job. He did he his did best. It's like a backhanded compliment to you, Ricardo. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Hey, hey uh, he helped me out a couple times. I did make a few mistakes, Brett, if you remember. So did the, the, some of our regulars here who are fantastic. <laughs> helped me out a little bit. I did throw the wrong flag. I, I, I did throw yes. the... Uh, we're penalty learning. flag and not the challenge flag. We're learning. We're well, learning. He went, he went through film. He's learning. Yeah, right? it's a so learning. We, we, we coach him here. up. Let's just, well, I'm learning, but let's make sure that doesn't happen again, Brett, or I have to I have no you. control over uh, those germs that are uh, out there right now. So, uh, well, how wild is this ride right now, uh, Josiah? Look at, I mean, look at this crowd. It's like standing room only, jam-packed, big audience. How wild is it? What was the plane ride like back from Dallas? Was everybody hooting and hollering and just having a good old time? Yeah, man, it's special to be a part of. So uh, 
it's fun to be able to uh, have this team on this ride to see how far we've come throughout the season. I mean, we were talking about there about where we were, you know, in the middle of the season, in the beginning of the season. So to be where we are now, uh, we're just grateful. And obviously, we, we, we don't take anything for granted. And, and, you know, we're not done yet. We're going to continue to keep working um, and striving for more each and every week. Now listen, uh, Josiah, I, I thought you guys weren't supposed to do anything this year, right? That's what, that's what all the national observers said. Green Bay's nothing. Jordan loves nothing. What do you have to say to those guys now that uh, were making such proclamations back in September and October? Yeah, I mean, all we need is us, man. At the end of the day, um, the only people that we, we need to rely on and, and that have each other's back is the people in that locker room. So the media is the media. You know, it's their job to say and write what, what's going on and their view of the season. But at the end of the day, we believe in ourselves. I've been saying this since the beginning. We got confidence in the men in that locker room. Um, and it shows how far this team's come. We've continued to grind each and every week and gotten better. And it proves, you know, it proves where, we are, where, where we're at right now. Now, here's some extra motivation for you to get ready for San Francisco. Ricardo, I don't know if you've, you've noticed this too, but of course today, you know, in, in reviewing the game, it's all about how the Cowboys played poorly and lost and not about how great these guys uh, played and won, right? Uh, again, kind of just sweeping you guys under the rug. What do you think about that? I mean, the tape, the tape is telling, isn't it? So, I mean, we weren't supposed to do nothing. Seven seed going in to play the, the Cowboys, who was, who've had a great year. Um, we barely snuck in. You know, you can write whatever story you want to write. We have no, one, no one's picking us to win each and every week. It's happened for the last however many months throughout the season, right? So that just goes back to what I said before. It, it, we have who we have in that locker room, and that's all we need at the end of the day. No, I have it right here. Matt LaFleur afterwards uh, said there's some freedom in playing uh, when so few are giving you a chance to win, right? Uh, lowered expectations. Do you agree with that? Is this a little bit more loose, loosey-goosey type stuff, no pressure on you guys? And, or do you not agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if it changes the preparation, but at the end of the day, there is nothing from our standpoint in our minds to lose. At the end, you know, because we're going into each and every game. People are doubting us. There's no one believing in us. Um, but we believe in ourselves. We know what we can do. We know what we can put on the field. Um, and we went out there on Sunday and proved it. There you go. You kind of, uh, you like that role of the underdog? You've been, you've been on the other side of this uh, early in your career, right? Uh, when you had the target on your back. Now it's a little bit different. You kind of like this role? Is this a little bit uh, more advantageous for you guys, maybe a little bit? I think that's just how our team's been the whole season. The yeah. underdog, uh, we've been embracing it. We got, a, uh, like everyone's been saying, a lot of young guys, the youngest team in, in the NFL, youngest team in the playoffs. And, you know, it's been working so far, so let's ride with it. Well, before we get to our three quick questions, looking back, uh, specifically, specific questions on yesterday's game, I want to ask uh, Packers 49ers. So you're kind of going back home a little bit, right? Uh, Folsom, California. How far is that from Santa Clara? It's like two hours. Two hours. So did you grow up a San Francisco 49ers fan? No, I grew up a Raider fan. Okay, yeah. good. That's good. Unlike this uh, 49ers goofball back oh. over here. Oh. All right. So uh, are you getting bombarded for, with family and friends for ticket requests uh, for Saturday night? Yeah, it's always it's always great to go back home. I haven't played, you know, in San in California. Um, when I got into the league, I haven't played in California in like eight years, you know. So it's always cool to go back home and play in front of friends and family. But also, friends and family comes with a lot of uh, a lot of Niner fans. So don't talk to a lot of people this week besides my immediate family. And uh, yeah, I'll I'll help some people out with tickets and. It'll be cool to, obviously, like I said, play in front of people that I don't get to see a lot of the time and that don't get to travel all the way out here. Um, so it's always cool going back to California, going back to the West Coast. But at the end of the day, it's a business trip for me and, and for the team. So that's what really matters. Absolutely. Uh, keep the train rolling. So, again, uh, one more question, then we'll get to our gift of the night. Three quick questions. I have to, we have to give this guy uh, kudos. Did you see his block on Micah Parsons that sprang Aaron Jones uh, free for, that, for Jones' third touchdown run of the game? Take us through that play. So you're on the left side of the formation. You've got to cross to the right side. That's not an easy block against one of the game's best defenders. So take us kind of through what you're looking at, what you're trying to do, what you're focused on, and, and how, did you, how did you execute it? Because Jones came right behind you, and, and there was a hole right there, and pay dirt and a few, few seconds later. Yeah, I mean, the play was executed, you know, just how we ride it up. Um, obviously, Michael Parsons is a great player. They have great defensive ends on, on the Cowboys, um, all four or five of them that play. Um, but we just, we, that's a play we run a lot. And when, you know, the front side of the line gets pushed like that, um, and then, you know, Tuck, I think Tuck jabbed him and went and blocked the linebacker, and then my job was 
you know, to get the last free guy in, uh, in Psalm and half is the way we call it. But, um, you know, get my job done and to be able to free up Aaron to, Aaron to get into the end zone. So it, it worked out perfectly, and it was like a lot of plays that happened last night. A lot of plays worked out perfectly, just how we drew them up, and you can't ask for anything more than that. So when you saw Micah Lane on the turf, did you kind of look at him and say, Micah who? <laughs> Micah who? As you're celebrating with Aaron Jones and giving a little, talking a little trash out there? Every now and then I'll say a few things, but I like to, I like to go celebrate with my teammates, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? It's, it's more, about, more about the team, more about Aaron scoring that touchdown, him with a great game. Um, what do you have, three tugs last night? So he loves going back to Texas. He sure does. I mean, what's that, seven, seven touchdowns in two games? I've got so, it in the stat pack. Today, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's always fun celebrating with your guys and to be able to be a part of a, of a touchdown. You can't take it for granted and enjoy it. No need to poke the bear, right? So, yeah, but Matt LaFleur, he, uh, he, he noted that you're blocking his postgame comments as well. So uh, uh, you did your 1-11. Okay, Rosie, it's time for tonight's Clubhouse Live gift of the night. What do we have? They, oh, look at the yeah, – yeah, yeah, he's waving bye-bye to the Cowboys, isn't he? Look at Aaron Jones doing his thing. <laughs> waving bye-bye to the Dallas Cowboys. So uh, that's how everybody was feeling uh, last night here in Titletown and in Packerland. So – Let's, uh, three quick questions as we look specifically back on yesterday's game. First, we asked uh, Keyshawn this last week. I want to ask you the same thing. When you're looking at number 33, what does that guy mean to your offense? What does he mean to your team? What does he mean to your locker room? Because uh, he is a true leader in every uh, sense of the word, isn't he? Yeah, man, he's, he's everything for our offense, for our team. Great leader, great person. Um, someone who's really catapulted us, you know, ever since he's been, been able to come back from that injury. You just look at the last, you know, four or five games, or I think four games it is. We, uh, it's pretty much been four playoff games in a row for us at the end of the day. We had to win four games or three games to get here. And then obviously last week or yesterday was, you know, the, the true playoffs. But, and he's had, Aaron's had 100 yards each game. Um, but not only that, his presence on the sideline, his presence within the locker room, um, being able to lift others up, not only with his, with his play, but with his voice. Um, he's someone that a lot of us lean on. And, um, a lot of the young guys look to um, throughout the game and throughout, throughout the season. So it's, it's great to have him back at, at full speed. Yeah, he looks fresh, right? Uh, he looks really, really good. Dangerous running back, dangerous quarterback going into San Francisco. Uh, number two, uh, Ricardo always calls them the big uglies, right? Those, those uh, offensive linemen up front. They never get enough love, though. We're going to give them some love okay. tonight, uh, Josiah. Those guys, how about the offensive line? They're playing fantastic football right now. I mean, you got Walker, you, you got uh, Myers, you got Jenkins, you got Ryan, you got Runyon, you got Tom. I mean, you got you as an honorary member of the, of the offensive line. So how far have those guys come this year? Because it was a little, little bit of a struggle early on in the season. So what, 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 uh, what got that all turned around? Because they're, they're looking great. Yeah, they've been, they've been doing great. I think in the run game and the pass game, I think last night was another zero sack night. Um, so they've been doing a great job containing. We've played some great edge rushers, and we will continue to play great edge rushers throughout the, the rest of the season. Um, but especially the last however long the, the O-line's really turned it around, man. They've been shutting those guys down and been able to get pushed up front. And that's, you know, you can see it with Aaron's play, with A.J.'s play before that, um, being able to get those, those runs to really spark our offense, and then that opens up the pass for Jay Love and the receivers. So it's been cool to watch, man. And, and all those guys, they quiet, like, like you said, they quietly shut down some of, the, some of the best pass rushers in the league. So they've been doing a great job, and, and they don't get enough enough praise for sure yeah hopefully uh, they can keep it going into a Saturday night last but not least you got to talk about Jordan Love right every week we got to talk about this guy he's been playing fantastic football uh, Josiah what is your best superlative of Jordan Love I mean you got amazing incredible unbelievable unreal I mean what do you what do you what what is your word to do to describe what he's been doing right now he's just balling man he's continues to be the same person he's always been and I've said that on the show every every time we bring him up He's the same person, man. Each and every week, he walks into the locker room, smile on his face, going to work, making the team better. We know he's putting the work in to, to put on – he's putting the work in to go out there and show out on Sundays, and he's been balling. So, you know, obviously we need him, and, and he, he's, he's clicking on the right time as long as the rest of the offense. He sure is. I know Josh Myers, after the game, said he was wowed with some of the throws. Like, he's, he couldn't believe it. I mean, you kind of that same way in some of these, some of these darts he's throwing right now? Yeah, sometimes you just got to look back and be like, you know, you take it for granted, especially, you know, with Aaron being here before with some crazy throws he had. And then, you know, with Jordan now, you see a, a lot of the same characteristics, a lot of the same throws. And you, like, you get accustomed to it, you know what I'm saying? You get spoiled, quote, unquote, a little bit. So sometimes during practice, you just, like, you sit back there, you rewind the film a few times, and 
he's threading the needle through the middle of the defense, through defenders' hands, and whatever it may be. And you're just like, man, we got this guy on our side, and, and we're glad we do. Yeah, hopefully for, for another 15 years, right? And, and, then, and then he'll get traded to the Jets. There's some guy in fourth grade right now will be the next Packers quarterback, and it's just kind of just keep this cycle going. So, hey, by the way, have you attended one of Jordan's now uh, very famous Monday night gatherings, right? All of a sudden this came out. Uh, and, and if you have... Did you guys all gather around the computer to watch a little Clubhouse Live together as well? Or? Yes. Is that, is that what this is all about? Yeah, of course. Not Monday Night Football, Clubhouse Live. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Absolutely. I thought so. I yeah, thought so. 100%. They all gathered. Does that make you feel better hearing that? It makes yeah. me feel all fantastic. Right. So, yeah. hey, let's take a time out and do tonight's stat pack. We'll do trivia, and then we'll get Bo over here. Uh, we talked about it, right? Aaron Jones loves playing against the Cowboys. The Texas native, right? He's from El Paso, our former co-host. We talked about that when he was on the show. He has been a Cowboys killer throughout his career. He now has 488 rushing yards and nine touchdowns in four games against Dallas. How about that for uh, Aaron Jones? He has rushed for at least 100 yards and averaged at least 5.5 yards per carry in all four of those games. Incredible production. And uh, another quick stat pack. The Packers have scored at least 34 points in all five of their games against the Cowboys at AT&T Stadium. So you guys love going down to Big D and uh, just making Jerry Jones squirm, right? You just love it. You love it, and we all love watching it. Ricardo, yeah. we're doing trivia. We are, but first, we have some rules. First off, we will ask the question. If you know, please raise your hand. Don't shout it out. You're just helping someone else win. Uh, but once uh, you're correct, you do win what, Brett? We've got some great items from the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. We've got this, uh, this Hawaiian-type shirt and also this Tim Dillard bobblehead. Some good stuff. But once you win, you're out for the rest of the show. And sorry, live chatters, got to be here to win. So here I go. Uh, trivia question number one. Uh, the Packers have faced two teams nine different times now in the playoffs. The Cowboys are one. Who is the other? We gonna, we, wait, which one? Way, way in the back by the window? The guy in the jersey you're talking? Sorry, the guy in the jersey behind you. Yep, come on up. San Francisco 49ers is right. You get the bell. And Josiah, I'll let you give uh, that uh, Timber Rattlers Hawaiian shirt. San Francisco, talk about classic playoff matchups, Ricardo, right? First Packers, Cowboys, now Packers, 49ers. Uh, the Packers and Niners will meet in the playoffs now 10 times uh, when they face off uh, this coming Saturday. But for now, those nine playoff matchups the Packers have with both Dallas and San Francisco, that's tied for the most in NFL history, along with Cowboys, 49ers, and Rams, Cowboys. So there you go, uh, a lot of history. So are we... Uh, we ready to get your guy over here? Maybe he can sprint over here. Yeah, Everybody's talking about how fast this guy is. He we want to see his sprinter speed. Our guest tonight, we're going to say, is in his second NFL season and his first with the Packers. He was selected by the Seahawks in the seventh round of the 2022 NFL Draft and then was signed to the Packers active roster off the Seahawks practice squad in 2022. Our guest tonight uh, has appeared now in six games for the Packers this season. That includes Sunday's playoff matchup against Dallas. He finished the regular season with 16 receptions for 218 yards and one touchdown. Our guest tonight became the first Packers receiver this season with at least 100 receiving yards in a single game when he had six catches for 105 yards and then his first career touchdown reception in that 33-10 victory over the Minnesota Vikings in Week 17. Remember that. Our guest tonight played collegiately, unfortunately, Badger fans, right, at Rutgers, right? We don't want to talk about them, that Big Ten, that Big Ten school we don't want to uh, mention. But uh, he did earn Big Ten honors out there. He is one of the fastest guys in the NFL, Josiah. Our guest tonight was seen next to Jordan Love in victory formation yesterday. We'll talk about that. He also has appeared on ESPN Sports Center's Top Ten Plays. Did you know that, Josiah? And he can drum. More on that in a little bit. How about a big Clubhouse Live welcome for Green Bay Packers wide receiver. He's number 80. He's Bo Melton, everybody. <laughs> welcome to Clubhouse Live, Bo Melton. You did kind of scurry. You, got, you showed some speed here a little bit. Uh, not too bad. Stomped on the welcome mat. But uh, before we get started, because this is the Outlaw Show, we call him the Outlaw, and he is your, you are his guest, Josiah insists on asking the first question of the night. 
All right, Bo. So uh, with your with your recent um, impact on the team, especially you know with the last game in Lambeau, what was your favorite part about this last game in Lambeau and playing in front of these great fans we have here? I say most definitely making it to the playoffs. That's number one, and um, <laughs> feels better when you beat the Bears and Ooh. having the fans. Look, look at him when you say that. Look at that guy. I, I felt, I felt like that was a personal dig at me, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, but the fans were awesome. It was a great atmosphere, so it was just great just having that win to go to the playoffs. I think that was the best. And having a little fun right now too, right? So everybody's having fun uh, on Monday night, Victory Monday. <laughs> Speaking about Victory, you're out there in the Victory Formation. You're next to Jordan Love there yesterday. So I want to know what exactly is your role in that situation? Are you there? Because if something really goofy happens and the ball squirts free, that because of your sprinter speed, you're going to chase the guy down, right? Is that, is that why you're out there in victory formation? Yeah, um, <laughs> really just to get a play in for, your, uh, for the team. But Wick stole my spot. I was supposed to be in the back, and like we were supposed to switch. But he was like, no, nah, I'm, I'm the fastest, so he went in the back. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's you know, the best play in football, the victory formation. So. It was good to be on there for it's sure. Definitely good, right, to take that knee and uh, come back uh, with a victory and moving on in the playoffs. Well, let's cut, let's cut right to the chase. Bo Melton, are you the fastest guy on the Green Bay Packers? Are you? We're top two. Okay. Um, well, before you finish, yeah. I want to say this. We asked Keyshawn Nixon about you. Keyshawn is our other co-host. and We asked uh, him about you last week, uh, and, and he, he, he just cannot relinquish what he thinks is his rightful – uh, label as being the fastest guy on the team, right, Ricardo? Keyshawn he was Nixon very he emphatic. Is. He said, no, Bo Melton is not faster than me. Continue. Me and Key go back and forth all the time about this. Key's not faster than me or Christian. Oh. Yeah, man, a, oh. Yes. Oh. Let's cut this yeah. clip out, and if uh, Keyshawn's here next week, we've got to play that <laughs> yeah. for him. Yeah. <laughs> we just had this conversation, I think, a little bit ago. But Key's definitely fast. I'm not going to sit here and lie. We're definitely – going to race after the season, me, him, and Christian to see who's the fastest, but good to have speed on the team. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of other, other guys that are fast as well. Jay Reed is super fast. Um, well, Rudy uh, Ford, I know, has got some speed. Rudy, really. Darnell Savage. Um, Jair's fast. A lot of fast guys, but, you know, Key's going, he's going to talk. With, he's going to talk. So, <laughs> yes, yeah. he is. We know that uh, very well, uh, hanging out with him on Monday nights as well. Yeah, Darnell, he looked really fast on that uh, pick six, didn't he? He took it and he was gone, so... Well, I tell you, you and Christian, you train together uh, pre-draft, right? So you guys have a, a bond. But uh, I hear, rumor has it, that you actually beat him at the uh, combine in, in the 40 time. So maybe that makes you faster than him, uh, Bo? Yeah, I mean, that's what I hold against him. <laughs> um, but he's definitely ran four twos low at uh, the training facility he was training at. And so he has that against me. But, you know, I try to hold the combine time against him. But... Inside, he knows he has a little time, 4-2 time at the Bomberito. So it felt good for him to have that and me to have the combine. So. We'll have to get Christian back on. He was on the show last year. Maybe uh, talk about this. We've got to figure it out once and for all, Ricardo, who's the fastest player on the green. And we have to live stream that. As I said last week, we got this big baseball field, a lot of space. They can put up some running lanes for these guys. I'm sure you'd love nothing more than to go out there in my minus 30 butt windshield and show us how fast you really are, right? I'll time them. Yeah. I'll time them. From yeah. inside, we'll look out the window and we'll kind of watch them. They can turn on the lights, all that good stuff. Well, what's this about you now, ESPN Sports Center's top 10 plays, right? Well, this had something to do with you dunking a basketball on one of your Rutgers teammates. Is that how you got on? Or what is this? Am I reading this right? Yeah, we have a basketball court um, at Rutgers in our team room. And um, we always are going back and forth. We have the highest vertical, jumping, all the other stuff. And um, so one of my freshman guys with me was uh, Saheem Simmons. And he was like, you're not going to dunk on me. <laughs> and everybody's like, stand under the rim, stand under the rim. And so I took like a head start and kind of dunked on him. And it kind of went, you know, viral for a minute. And I felt bad. So, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a crazy moment. Definitely in uh, college for sure. Now, did you know Josiah was a, a top 10 guy too back in high school? He got on ESPN Sports Center top 10. Did you tell him that, Josiah? No, it's not something I talk about a lot. But uh, yeah, I was. We, we talked about it on the show. He did it for his one-handed grab as a high school kid uh, at the Folsom Bulldogs over there in California. Good so old days. The good old days, the glory days. So, Well, what else we have here? Let, let's keep this thing going as we get to know uh, uh, Bo Melton. So you're a drummer. 
you can do a little drumming. Is that true? How yes, accomplished sir. of a drummer are you? Um, I played, you know, my, my father is a pastor, so uh, like Josias. Mm -hmm. So um, when I was two years old, I tried to te teach myself how to play the drums. And my dad was, you know, bringing me to lessons when I was like nine or 10. So I would play the drums in church and I would kind of like, I kind of kept that going until I was about 16. And then, you know, um, when I went to college, I kind of stopped a little bit, but I kept a drum set for sure. Okay. You know, I just had this thought, Ricardo. Hey, I, I just, I just had this, I wish we had, we could have put them on the spot, right? We've had some well, drumsticks, maybe a practice pad or something. I'm quite a musician myself. I actually happen to have drumsticks in a you drum do pad. Not. I you do, do in not. You do not. Bag. Are you kidding, kidding me? No, I do. Hold on one second. Well, let's let, let bring them up here. Yeah, I can't believe Ricardo actually packed some drumsticks and a practice pad, like a little little drum pad. We'll bring them up, Ricardo. What, what are the chances that we have a drummer and you have drumsticks? Maybe, maybe Bo could show us some of his drumming skills, right, ladies and gentlemen? I mean, let's, let's, let's test this guy out here a little bit. Let's see if this is legit. Now, I haven't done this about a little bit, so give me a little sweat. We'll, we'll give you a little uh, latitude here. Well, there we go. All right, there you go. Good job, Bo. You will not find that type of content on any other Green Bay Packers show. You're just not going to find that on any other show. So, on this, we, you know, we did this once. I don't, do you know Jared Bush? Uh, he was back in the that's well before, before your time, but he played on the 2010 Green Bay Packers. He claimed in his bio he could drum. He could play, I think, the trombone. Trombone. And the that did not go and well. And the tuba. We had him on three separate times, and each time we tested him, and he couldn't do any of them. He couldn't even blow in the mouthpiece. It was like nothing was coming out of the instrument. Remember that? And, and, and I do remember him saying a bad word. Yes, he I, did swear on the we, show. And we're not tape delayed, so no. whoops. So credit to you, Bo, for uh, actually he living didn't lie. up to... He uh, didn't lie. Yeah. It's not a liar. It's there not a lie. He can actually <laughs> drum. So, Well, let's do this. Josiah, break this guy up. I always do this, right, with you and Keyshawn, when you guest. Man, what a spark he's, he's brought to the offense, right? Uh, he's made some big plays. He's had big moments, big games. Uh, and it seems like everybody loves this guy. Yeah, Bo's, Bo's done a great job, man. Um, team first guy, somebody that's been grinding uh, all year long. You know, he could have been somebody at the beginning of the season who felt like he got the short end of the stick and deserved a little bit more than what he got. But, man, been balling on uh, our starting defense for the majority of the year, and everybody sees it. And then, you know, he took advantage, when he, took advantage of when he got his shot. Um, but he's a great player and even, even better person in the locker room. Great, great teammate, great guy to be around. Yeah, good to have him on uh, the roster, isn't it? So, so Bo, what, what does it mean to you? I mean, uh, I think we all saw the reaction from the locker room, from, the, from your teammates after your big game against Minnesota. I mean, you see Romeo Dobbs, he was screaming, for heaven's sakes, when you were coming down the hallway. But uh, to be swarmed by your teammates, to be beloved by your teammates, I mean, uh, what does that mean to you to know that uh, they love having you on the team? Yeah, it means everything. You know, I play for these guys all, every single day. You know, practice, no matter just for meetings, anything, you know. Fridays, I usually dance for the team. I'm not dancing here, but. Well, well you, but you nah. brought it up there, Bo. <laughs> you brought it up. No, nah, but uh, definitely, just, I try to be the guy, you know, to bring everybody together, you know, have a great teammate. Just be a great teammate. That's one of the things we preach in our team. But, um, yeah, this feels good, you know, to help the team out and um, provide on Saturday, Sundays, and then provide on Mondays. So. Good Big spark. Again, another weapon in that, uh, in that locker room. And, uh, Rosie, if you got some dance music for Bo, I think he'd like to hear that. No, we won't do that. We won't put you on the spot there. So let's talk about this. We always, we always talk about, the, about these long, crazy journeys for, for all these guys, right? It seems like so many undrafted guys or late-round guys, practice squad guys, and, and, uh, and you rode to the NFL. So you, Packers signed you off the Seahawks practice squad, right, uh, late last season. And then after a final roster cuts this preseason, the Packers release you. But you had a decision to make at that time. You could re-sign with the Packers and uh, to the practice squad, or you could say, you know what, I'm out of here. I'm looking, I'm looking somewhere else. Why did you decide to stick with the, with the Packers? I'll say uh, it was my teammates. You know, like I said before, like I love this team. Um, early on, you know, we're just really, really tight as a unit. Um, we did a lot of things together. Uh, so it kind of like kept me to stay here. 
you know, I wanted to see how it worked, how the season was going to go. And um, it went really good. You know, we started to bond really, uh, especially second half of the season. You know, a lot of the guys started to get to know each other more. We had the dinners with Jordan, you know, the stuff like that. You know, I could tell from, you know, training camp that we all wanted to bond as a team. So that kind of kept me here, especially um, because of that and my teammates, I'll say. Yeah, I know you're close with Christian. Yeah. Close with Christian, Romeo Dobbs, those, those, those guys. So, so how did you keep yourself ready so you don't have, didn't have to get yourself ready? That's always a saying that, that, that you hear. So how did you stay patient through the process and, uh, and, and, and know that when your opportunity came, you were ready for it? Yeah, you know, our coach uh, always preaches, you know, um, practice execution is game reality. So going out there and practice, you know, I wanted to go against starting defense, get myself better, you know, against – you know, Jair, you know, Eric Stokes, all those guys at cornerback, you know, and playing on offense, you know, when I got my first team reps a little bit, I know I wanted to show, you know, Jordan that he could trust me. And so in the situations, um, doing it from week one to no matter what time it was for me to be called up. And um, it helped, you know, especially when you have somebody believing in you like the team, you know, just every single day say, keep going, keep going, you know, that helps me along the process. So I think that uh, helped me when I started to play. So what do you think you've shown yourself to the team and to the rest of the league now? Now you, you, you've made some plays. You've had your opportunity, uh, like, like Jonathan Owens told us last week, when he came, uh, was able to make his opportunities count. He had a big uh, interception when he was with Houston off of uh, Herbert, Justin uh, 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 Herbert of the Chargers. Um, conversely with you and having that big game against Minnesota, you put stuff on film, I guess, right? But uh, what have you shown the league, the team, yourself uh, in, in coming up with these big moments? Yeah, you know, I just want to be myself, you know. I played football all my life, you know, making plays, you know, it was a blessing to be here. And so, you know, the job not finished, you know, you always want to keep getting better, keep growing, and that's what I'm um, going to keep doing for myself. And uh, I'm just going to let God, you know, write our story. So. A few more things, and then I'm going to kick it over to Ricardo for the social media question of the night, so get ready for that. But uh, Jordan Love, he said your wide receiver room, he called it it's an unselfish room. Um, it just seems like there's multiple guys, right, that, you, that just can hurt you. And it doesn't matter when. It doesn't matter what moment of the game. Um, is that the strength of the, of, of the receiving room right now? Is just that nobody cares who's, who's coming up with the big plays, the big moments, and it's, it is that unselfish uh, attitude that, that, that's got you guys humming right now? Absolutely. You know, we have a bunch of guys in that room um, from top to bottom. All of us, you know, make plays and to help the quarterback, to help the team. Um, and the tight end room as well, you know, we have the running back room, we have a bunch of really good skill guys. And so uh, we're in a wide out room, you know, we always preach we're unselfish, but we're going to block for the running back, um, tight end, whoever's getting the ball, we're going to uh, make the play when the play comes to us and whoever's hot, you know. And Romeo had an amazing game. Um, he was getting open, Romeo doesn't talk, so I couldn't <laughs> get him hype. Uh, I was trying my hardest, but, you know, he didn't say nothing back, so. But it was just a great feeling to see, you know, every, sing every single body in that room be unselfish for each other. Sure. Yeah, we had Romeo on the show last year, Ricardo, right? Remember, and he, he was a quiet individual. It was tough to kind of pry uh, that, that personality out you of You got him. him to open up a little bit. A little bit. bit. We got him uh, laughing a little bit, uh, smiling. So, Jose, I want to ask you this. Uh, you're a defensive coordinator now, all right? Who do you stop? You're looking at the Green Bay Packers. Who do you, who do you stop? You got Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, uh, uh, Dontavian Wicks, Bo Melton, Jaden Reed, Malik Heath. Then you had the, the tight ends, uh, your room, and all you guys. Uh, how do you stop? Uh, who? who how do you do it? I don't know. I mean, it's got to be almost impossible to focus in on one guy right now. Yeah, I think that's what's cool about the offense, and it's it's something that's gradually built up over the season, and we've had multiple guys go go off throughout, throughout the season and, and different games when their number's called, being ready to step up just like Bo did, and um, I think it's a challenge, and that's why I think we've been able to succeed, because if you take something away, um, another person's going to be ready to step up and and when their number's called, you know? And it's just the belief in each other, like he talked about. It's the love for one another. You can see it when we're out there on the field. No one's getting mad because they're not getting the rock or, and, and somebody else is, you know? You see that on teams sometimes when, when selfish things become to uh, start to overhaul, you know, the team aspect of the game. But we got an unselfish team, unselfish offense, and, you know, it's paid dividends lately. And a quarterback who uh, has no problem distributing the ball, right? Not trying to force feed anybody. What, what's it like for you, Bo, watching uh, Jordan? What's, what's he like in the huddle? How does he command uh, the huddle right now? It's, uh, he's got to be complete confidence right now. Oh, yeah, man. Jordan's the best, you know, practice off the field, on the field. You know, he's an amazing person, amazing player. Um, definitely in the huddle, you know, he gets everybody ready to go. 
So that's what you have to do. We go out there, we execute the play. Um, in practice, you know, he commands the huddle, um, just like he does in the game. So, you know, Jordan, he deserves the best. He's been doing an awesome job. You know, he's been helping not only, you know, the wide outs, the running backs, he's been helping the whole team, you know, just stick together, stay together. So it's just a testament to his hard work, for sure. Not only that, but he's, he's, he's getting people out of snow drifts. I mean, he's pushing cars out. I mean, he's, he's all over the place right now, this guy. Unbelievable. So last thing, uh, Bo, are you uh, aware of the significance of the number 80 in Packers uh, wide receiver history? Have you, have you been kind of taught, taught that? Uh, do, you, do you know a little bit about, about the number? Absolutely. Uh, Donald Driver's number, for sure. James Lofton as well. James Tofa. Lofton yeah. as well. Um, yeah, Donald Driver, seven-round pick as well. Mm -hmm. He had... I think 10,000, over 10,000 yards receiving. Both sure. of those guys are, t uh, Driver's the leading receiver in Packer history, and Lofton's yep. number two. And uh, yeah, so I guess uh, so thrilled to wear the number 80. Is that something that uh, maybe you aspire to be as uh, the next Donald Driver, next seventh round pick and a Packers Hall of Famer someday down the road? Absolutely. You know, he set a world, um, the world not only set a world record, but a team record of mm -hmm. 10,000 yards. So, you know, and 61 touchdowns, I think. And then I did my research as soon as I had the number. I'm like, I got to look this up because everybody was talking about, you have number 80, man. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, <laughs> I had to look it up. So, uh, but he's definitely, you know, that's an amazing person to look up to. Um, I definitely, you know, I was at the Donald Driver uh, charity game as well, softball game. And um, he's just an amazing person as well. So, yeah. A lot of uh, great players have worn that number and uh, some other really nice players as well. So a lot of history with that number. Hey, Ricardo, a uh, social media question of the night. What do you have? That's right. Here we go. Bill Calloway on Facebook wants to know, hey, every locker room creates its identity during the season. When did you guys feel that you found your identity? Give that one to Josiah. What do you think, Josiah? I don't know if there's a specific point that you can uh, point out throughout the season that we that we decided, like, all right, this is our identity. Um, but it's just the way we've been, been able to work. It, we're people that, there's a lot of different sayings that we say and um, a lot of different things that we go throughout the day and, and, and think, uh, think about and put emphasis on. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's just putting in work. And we, all, we have the people in that locker room that we trust, that we rely on, and we, we're all we got, we're all we need. And especially, you know, playing, being in this playoff atmosphere, it's like, it's really us because we see everyone doubting us and all these different things, and it doesn't matter because we believe in ourselves and we got the confidence to do it. Good question. Uh, thank you, Bill, uh, for having his question, question selected. Bill does win a signed photo. Each week uh, we'll ask you to submit, uh, submit a question for a co-host or guest that we'll ask live during Monday's show. Again, look for it on Facebook.com slash Clubhouse Live. Uh, we're going to take another time out, and, uh, hey, i got to do this uh, first. Uh, stick around after the show. We've got a couple of fantastic Mean Gene bobbleheads to give away, ladies and gentlemen, our unofficial mascot. He's sitting right there. Uh, bobble, they're friend, uh, courtesy of our friends at Bobbles Galore. Bobbles Galore is your source for the largest selection of bobbleheads you will find anywhere. That includes a great selection of Packers, Brewers, and Bucks bobbleheads. And in honor of his outstanding game uh, against the Cowboys yesterday, be sure to check out the brand new Romeo Dobbs bobbleheads. Uh, I'm not sure if we have them on the screen. Uh, one in the regular jersey and one in the throwback jersey. Only 250 of each were made, so this is a very limited edition. There it is right there, uh, Romeo Dobbs bobbleheads from Bobbles Galore. So uh, shop bobblesgalore.com today. What's so funny? Those are great-looking bobbleheads, right? Replicas, it, for sure. Exactly like them. Yeah. Exactly like them. He's <laughs> usually not smiling, right? Uh, he's usually got that stoic uh, face. But uh, Bobbles Galore has done, done a, a, been a great partner and we got some Mean Gene bobbleheads to give away after the show. Ricardo, we're doing trivia question number two. That's right. I need you three to kind of look out in the crowd and see who raises their hand. Uh, here's the question. The Packers are tied with this team for the most playoff appearances in NFL history at 36. I saw this uh, guy. But, oh, no, yes, right there. <laughs> yes, you got it. The Dallas Cowboys. Come on up. Get your prize. Now, if this was Jeopardy, we, we would have gotten that doot, doot, doot sound, you know, and we would have we moved on. But uh, we're not Jeopardy. You get this uh, bobblehead courtesy of the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. The Dallas Cowboys, uh, the, both the Packers and uh, Cowboys, uh, 36 uh, playoff appearances in NFL history. By the way, the Packers, 22-17 and 17 against uh, Dallas all time, including the playoffs. They've beaten Dallas in five straight meetings and 10 of the last 11. And that makes up for all of those... Uh, those hideous, uh, awful defeats, right, in, in the 1990s against the Dallas Cowboys. Right, Mean Gene? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. So, hey, Rosie, we need some music. It is time for tonight's Clubhouse Live Challenge. Ricardo, it's the red flag. It's the red flag we throw for the challenge. Oh, yeah, the red flag. The red flag. I got that. I got that. So this is what we're going to do, guys. This is a physical challenge, right? I'm going to test your athleticism tonight. Check this out. Hold on. I got a stack of green cups for Bo. And I've got a stack of yellow cups or gold for Josiah. Now, this is called Pyramid Scheme. We haven't played this game in quite some time. And don't forget who it's sponsored by, Brett. Sponsored by, uh, yes, right, Munoz Family and Cosmetic Dentistry, your center for dental excellence, voted Reader's Choice, best dentist, best of the Bay, and back-to-back -back years. Let Dr. Sebastian and his team of professionals help you achieve your dream smile. We appreciate you, Dr. Sebastian, uh, sitting right over there. So we call this the Pyramid Scheme. We haven't played this in a while. You each have... 15 plastic cups, right? Uh, all in a single stack. The object is simple. You must first stack the cups up like a pyramid, starting with five cups as your base, and then four, three, two, one. And then uh, you bring them right back down and put them in a stack. Now, if any of the cups falls, you have to start over. Well, you get the gist of it, it's pretty simple, right? Uh, the, one, the person who finishes first is the winner. Now, you have playing partners tonight. Now, Josiah, I hate to do this to you, but your playing uh, partner is Tim Van Dre, this, this knucklehead wearing a San Francisco 49ers jersey. Ah. That's who I picked. That was the name in the bucket. He claims he is rooting for the Packers, though. Now, Bo, your playing partner is somebody a lot nicer. It's Amber Barrenwald right over there, right by Grizzly Dan. This is what we're playing for tonight. The winner tonight gets this cool uh, Packers uh, key ring, courtesy of our friends at Shields, right? You get a signed photo of the outlaw, Josiah DeGuara, and because it really is winter, again, USA Today Network Wisconsin ice scrapers. You might need those for uh, your car as you go home. The uh, runner-up tonight goes home with the signed photo and uh, the ice scraper. By the way, when I was watching the show uh, two weeks ago, I saw that, uh, that a young man had a pretty cool outlaw or, uh, He's here. Is he? Where is he? Yeah, right where is there. he? Where is yes, he? Do, you, do you still come have on that on? Yeah, yeah there Brent, it is. Show Brett. Brent, come on yeah, up. Yeah, I want to see this. Come on. You, have you guys seen this guy? He's got an outlaw uh, sweatshirt. Yes, uh, sir. Josiah DeGuara. Yeah, turn around here and let's see that. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Yes, sir. You're the man. Very nice. And uh, by the way, my lawyer will be in contact with you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I did, did I not come up with that nickname? I want a little you piece of the action, Ricardo. Hey, it's only fair. I want a piece of the action. Okay, so here we go. A pyramid scheme. By the way, I'm only kidding. I, I don't have a lawyer. Uh, I don't want anybody to get upset with me. So pyramid scheme. Who thinks Josiah DeGore is winning tonight's challenge? <laughs> Bo does. <laughs> Who thinks Bo Melton is winning the challenge? Now, Bo, you are really fast, all right? You are really, really fast. So you have the advantage in this game. Your speed has the advantage in putting these cups together, right? Am I right in thinking that? I feel like I'm going to knock them down if I go too fast. <laughs> so. you're, you're speedy but clumsy is what you're saying. Well, we'll, we'll see. So here we go. Again, stack them up, and then they got to go right back how you see them right here. So let's count them down. Three, two, one. Let's get started, and let's cheer them on, ladies and gentlemen. Right now, Josiah in command of the game. Josiah almost has two levels. Bo is still struggling here. I think Josiah is in complete command of this game. Got to get that last one up there, Josiah. And you are good. Now you can stack them back down in a single stack like they, like they were. There you go. Bo is good. Oh, no, Bo! No, you're okay. You're okay. You just stack them up in a single stack, Josiah, and you officially win the game. There you go. Almost done. Almost done. Not, he has a Niner jersey, though. I don't know oh, what to oh, do. Oh, yeah. He doesn't want him to win. Uh, Bo oh, wins the game. Yeah, about what? Uh. An incredible comeback. Bo Melton wins tonight's Clubhouse Live Challenge. I was wondering what you're doing there. I'm like, finish the game, Josiah, but I see what you did. So that means, Amber, you're going home with the key ring, the signed photo, and the ice scraper. And uh, I'm sorry, 49ers fan, we're giving the other prizes to somebody else. You're not getting them. So 
How about a big round of applause for uh, the outlaw and Bo tonight? Do we have any audience questions, Ricardo? What was that again? Audience questions? That's right. Uh, so uh, we, we're going to need you, Tracy. Yeah, there she is. She's coming up She's here. coming up. Yeah. yeah, so very good. And uh, I think that was, a, that was good karma. Good karma for Saturday's game to make sure that the Green Bay Packers uh, are victorious and make sure that Mean Gene is even happier next Monday night. All right, All right, Carl, you're up. Our friend Tracy Santos asking another great question. Here you go, Tracy. Go ahead. A few weeks ago, a certain Bears quarterback said that there's nothing else to do in Green Bay other than play football or watch football. Do you think that helps the younger players to really focus and learn the playbook and bond with your teammates? First off, so it's true is what you're saying. <laughs> because there's nothing else to do in Green Bay? We're not down the Jersey Shore, a subway right away from the city, so sure. <laughs> All football all the time, right? Yeah, so uh, there is some stuff to do in Green Bay for sure. Uh, definitely snowball fights. We had that three, four times, so we're going to say that. <laughs> but uh, no, man, um, we definitely bond as a unit, you know, on and off the field. We always try to keep each other, you know, each other's company, see what's going on in the playbook, out the playbook, and stuff like that. But, you know, we won, so that's all I got to say. I ain't gonna it's all that matters, right? That's all, all right. that matters. Good question again, Tracy. Thank you, Tracy. Before we get going, Ricardo, we have uh, some very special guests here yes. tonight. We have our high school team of the week. Who are they, Ricardo? Appleton North Boys Basketball. Gentlemen, can you please stand up? Coaches, please stand up and be recognized. Brett. Talk them up. They're good. They're really, really good. Uh, first off, it's always wonderful when an Appleton City school is doing well in a particular sport. These guys are tearing it up on the boys' basketball scene in the Fox Valley Association. 10-1 overall, 5-1 in the FBA. Ranked fifth in the state in Division I in the latest WithSports.net State's Coaches Poll. Uh, Chris Kellett, where, where are you at, Coach? Raise your hand. There we go. Come on, raise your hand. There we go. He, there he he's is. shy. <laughs> he's shy. But, hey, he, his team features a young and talented roster. Brett, not unlike the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, kind of similar, Very right? young and yeah. talented. They're in the hunt for that FBA title, Brett, and a state tournament bid. Uh, they have a big, they big, do have a big tomorrow game night. tomorrow. They have a very big game against eighth-ranked Kalkana, Brett. But this team, we've been kind of waiting for Appleton North to kind of find their own identity and to be a consistent perennial contender uh, for, for the conference title and also a long, lengthy postseason run. Gentlemen, I think this is a season that might happen. This is a great team, folks. Go out and watch them. Appleton yep. North Boys Basketball. Absolutely. The Lightning, our high school Thank team you, of the guys. week, Appleton North. We streamed them earlier this year. They took down, was it third ranked Oshkosh North at the time? Yeah, I think they beat Oshkosh fantastic. North. Very good. We're going to get them on some more Varsity Game of the Week live streams here as the season goes along. So thank you, gentlemen, for being here and hanging out with us tonight. And uh, guys, we're going to kind of wrap things up here. We did our audience question. But I want to ask you, Bo, real quick your brother Max, right? Uh, All Big Ten cornerback at Rutgers. He's going to enter into the uh, NFL draft this spring. I want to know, let's say, he's, let's say he's a member of the Minnesota Vikings, right? Wait, 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 wait. I've already have him mocked to the Bears. I'm no. just letting you know. We don't, want his, uh, we don't want him touching anything in Chicago. We, we, Minnesota Vikings, because we, we hate them more anyway. He's lined up against you. You're a wide receiver. He's a cornerback. Who's winning that matchup? That's my brother, man, but I can't, just, I can't go back and forth with him right now. You know, because... Uh, He's definitely going into the draft. He's a really, really good cornerback. You know, we definitely had our battles in college. Um, I see I came out on top of us a couple more, a little more, but there you, you go. know, he's definitely going to be, you know, a really, really good cornerback in the NFL. Um, hopefully, you know, he comes here, but he's going to be really good, and I can't wait for him, um, his journey as well. That'll be fun. You know, you're going to talk trash if he's lining up across. You got to say something. He's your brother. I think we got who's faster. Ooh, who's faster between you and Max? Go. Y'all put me on a spot today. <laughs> yeah, but Ricardo, roll those drumsticks again. Let's get them drumming. <laughs> yeah, too. But uh, Max is really fast, really, really fast as well. Um, he's going to run fast at the combine. I'll say right now we're the same speed because I don't want to, you know, it's his process as well. I want him to enjoy it as well. So I can't wait to see what he runs at the combine as well. But he is, is really fast as well. So. All right, maybe he ends up in Green Bay. We've got another Melton uh, on the roster. That'd be kind of good. So, hey, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Short week and a long trip uh, to California. What are the challenges uh, as you get ready for the 49ers? Uh, I suppose you 
prefer to have that game on a Sunday, but the NFL said, nope, Saturday night. Yeah, it is what it is. We can't control anything anything about it. We control what we can control. Obviously, the Niners are, are a really good team uh, with a lot of great players. Uh, we run a very similar you know scheme on the offensive side of the ball, so um, both defenses are kind of going to know what's coming. So it's kind of... Uh, it's kind of like we're looking ourselves in the mirror a little bit and playing, playing ourselves from a standpoint of, of scheme and stuff like that. But it's a big challenge, and we're excited for it. And like I said, we're confident in our abilities, um, especially what we've been able to do lately. And, and we know it's a challenge, so we're going to prepare that way and like we have all season. Are there such a thing as unscouted looks still at this stage of the season, or have you pretty much seen everything? Are, there, are you still putting new plays in the playbook? Uh, that you can be careful how you answer that yeah, question. Yeah, no comment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. We'll I think it, I think there's a mixture, right? Yeah. You, we've played what 18 games now, so yeah. you know there's a lot we can do in 18 games, and there's a lot we might not have done in 18 <laughs> games, you know. So you just never know. I was kind of curious about that because uh, yeah, the, the 49ers are running a uh, basically the same scheme, right? So the, there might not be too many surprises out there. So last thing, importance of fast starts, right? Like you did yesterday, boy. Uh, Matt Lafleur saying, okay, we're we're gonna win the coin toss. We're taking the ball. We're not deferring. And uh, you get out on top, touchdown drive on, on the opening drive. Maybe that's key again uh, Saturday night, getting off to a fast start and making uh, San Francisco play catch up. Yeah, I love it, man. I love when Matt does that and, and tells the captains to take the ball if we win the toss because that, inj that just instills more confidence in, in us as a team, us as an offense. Um, Matt's like, screw whatever happens. Most people defer. We're taking the ball. We're going we're gonna to go down the beginning of the game, show them what we're all about. You know? And that's what really set the tone this weekend, I think. And you know, if we get the opportunity, um, based on whatever Matt wants to do, we, we can take it and run with it. It was a statement. It was a statement, and all of a sudden Dallas was like, uh-oh, and uh, could never catch up. So, hey, how about a big round of applause tonight for Josiah DeGore and Bo Melton. <laughs> Time to go up north, Ricardo. Uh, we are predicting a Saturday's Packers 49ers NFC Divisional game. Now, me and Gene will be watching you very, I know very carefully. He doesn't like how you pick this season, Ricardo. Listen. Who are you picking? Um, first off, last week, Josiah and Bo, you guys played outstanding. Very impressive. So this makes it difficult for me. Normally I think, hey, Packers are on a roll. You go with the hot team in the playoffs. Do you not, Brett? You do. But for the sake of this show, and because I love getting booed, <laughs> San Francisco by a touchdown. I love it. Gives me power. Well, you know what? I like getting cheered. And I'm putting this uh, hat on again. This thing has got a lot of victories in it. It's going back on. The Packers winter hat. I don't know if it's been defeated yet. How about a good old-fashioned shootout? How about 35-31? Why not? Let's go back and forth, right? Let's have some fun. The Packers weren't supposed to make the playoffs, and you did, right? The Packers weren't supposed to beat the Dallas Cowboys, and you did. The Packers aren't supposed to beat the San Francisco 49ers, but they will, right? They have the red-hot quarterback, <laughs> red-hot running back, red-hot receivers, Man, that's a dangerous combination, right? And I don't know if anybody wants to play you guys like we saw in Dallas. The Packers will co go into the game loose and relaxed, and we will be celebrating an NFC Championship berth next week here on the show. What do you think, Mean Gene? Yes. Do it for that guy, guys. Do it for that guy. Ricardo, Packers News app. That's right, with exclusive commentary, insider analysis, and award-winning photos and videos, Brett, from USA Today, USA Today Network Wisconsin's Packers coverage team. That Packers News app, your one-stop shop for complete coverage of the Green Bay Packers. Unlimited digital access to the Packers News app and PackersNews.com can be yours. Get this for as low as 99 cents, Brett, for that first month. No reason for you not to subscribe, and please subscribe today. Brett, we need that money. We always do, right? Again, thank you to our sponsors and friends. First, our presenting sponsors, Cellcom and Packerland Home Improvement. We also want to thank our segment sponsors, Bobbles Galore and Munoz Family and Cosmetic Dentistry. And finally, thank you to our supporting sponsors and friends. We have Shields, Escort Limousine Service, Cooney's Embroidery and Sportswear, Mayfield Sports Marketing, Mike Thiel and Eric lives here, Miller Lite, and as always, the good folks here with the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers and the Fox Club. Now, Josiah, I, 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 like I said to Keyshawn last week, I have no idea what the future holds. It is quite possible that this could be Josiah's final show with us again. But we don't want that to be the case, do we? We want this guy here again, which means we will be celebrating more playoff victories. But in the... Just in case, let's give, this, uh, let's give the outlaw a big round of applause for everything he's done for us this season. But we don't want it to be the end. Let's keep it humming. 
So I'm going to give you the final word tonight. Now we appreciate everyone coming out tonight. Thank you for uh, supporting us. Let's keep this thing going. Make a little run, run this week out in California, and uh, go pack, go. Let's do it. There you go. For the outlaw, for Bo, for Ricardo, and the rest of the Clubhouse Live crew, I'm Brett Christopherson saying so long. Be back here next Monday night at 6:30 as we celebrate a big Packers victory over the San Francisco 49ers and a berth into the NFC Championship game. In the meantime, Mean Gene, it's your turn. Take it away, Mean Gene.